Breast cancer is the number one cancer that affects women. Did you know that there are tools you can use that can assess your risk of developing breast cancer? If you want to learn more, then stay tuned. Hi, my name is Tasha Gendimahaja, here to help you navigate the world of health in general and breast health specifically. The lifetime risk of getting breast cancer is anything between 10 to 12%. However, have you ever wondered what your actual risk is of developing breast cancer in the future? Well, you can do this by using a breast cancer risk assessment tool. And many people did not know about this until recently when Olivia Munn, who is an actress, shared how she was diagnosed with breast cancer at the age of 42. According to reports, Olivia's OBGYN performed a breast cancer risk calculation that put her at a higher risk category this prompted Olivia to get an MRI scan that resulted in her diagnosis of breast cancer in both of her breasts. She had had a normal mammogram and a negative gene test just before her diagnosis. Olivia subsequently had a double mastectomy and reconstructive surgery. Firstly, let's talk about what being high risk actually means. There are three risk categories, average, intermediate and high risk. Women who are classified as high risk are considered more likely to develop breast cancer in their lifetime and as such are offered more intensive screening with mammograms and occasionally MRI scans as well. So, what is a breast cancer risk assessment tool? These tools are valuable resources used to estimate an individual's likelihood of developing breast cancer over a specified time period. These tools incorporate various factors such as age, family history, reproductive history, breast density, as well as genetic mutations to provide a personalized risk assessment. And there are actually several tools that are available. So let's talk about them. The Gale model, developed by Dr. Mitchell Gale and colleagues, estimates a woman's risk of developing invasive breast cancer over a specified time period, it's usually five years. The model takes into consideration factors such as age, race, age at menarche, age at first live birth, number of previous breast biopsies and the presence of atypical hyperplasia. This model has tested different ethnic groups and provides higher accuracy for white women than black women. And so there are limitations to this tool. It may underestimate the risk in black women with previous biopsies as well as Hispanic women born outside the US. And this tool cannot accurately estimate breast cancer risk for women carrying the BRCA1 and BRCA2 gene mutation, as well as women with previous history of invasive or in situ breast cancer. Number two is the Tyra Cusick model. This tool assesses the risk of developing breast cancer within the next 10 years and lifetime risk as well. This model incorporates additional risk factors such as breast density, hormone replacement therapy or HRT, the results of a genetic test for the BRCA1 and BRCA2 gene mutations as well. An average breast cancer risk is less than a 15% score. Intermediate is between 15 to 19% and over 20% is considered high risk. Number three is the Breast Cancer Surveillance Consortium Risk Calculator. This is also known as the BCSC Risk Calculator, which utilizes data from the Breast Cancer Surveillance Consortium, including mammographic density, to estimate a woman's risk of developing invasive breast cancer over a specified time period. Number four is Bodicea. This stands for Breast and Ovarian Analysis of Disease Incidence and Carrier Estimation Algorithm. Yep, that is quite a mouthful. It is a software platform that incorporates genetic, family history, lifestyle, hormonal and reproductive history, as well as mammographic density to stratify breast cancer risk. So who should use a breast cancer risk assessment tool? Well, these tools can be used by healthcare providers to estimate an individual's risk of developing breast cancer and guide personalized screening and risk reduction strategies. Generally, Individuals who may benefit from breast cancer risk assessments include women with a family history of breast cancer, especially those with first degree relatives such as mother, sister or daughter. Women with a personal history of breast cancer. You may benefit individuals with known genetic mutations associated with breast cancer such as the BRCA1 and BRCA2 gene mutations, as well as women with high breast 
density. Individuals with other risk factors such as early benarche, late menopause, nulliparity, HRT use, as well as lifestyle factors, for example, alcohol consumption and physical inactivity may benefit too. So what are the benefits of using these tools? Well, they offer several potential benefits, which can include personalized risk assessment. These tools can provide a personalized estimation of an individual's risk of developing breast cancer, taking into account the various risk factors specific to that individual. It can help with informed decision making, because by finding out who has increased risk of developing breast cancer, these tools can help with the decision making regarding screening options, risk reduction strategies, as well as preventative interventions. It can also help with targeted screening. Those identified as being at high risk may benefit from more frequent or intensive screening modalities, such as an MRI, in addition to mammography. And this can potentially lead to earlier detection of breast cancer and improved outcomes. And this is exactly what happened to Olivia Munn. It can also help with risk reduction strategies, because for individuals who are identified as being at increased risk of developing breast cancer, then this can help healthcare providers implement risk reduction strategies, such as chemo prevention, lifestyle modifications, as well as surgery if appropriate. However, it is important to note though that although these breast cancer risk assessment tools may estimate a woman's risk, these do not precisely predict which woman will get breast cancer. In fact, some women who do not develop breast cancer may have higher risk estimations than some women who do develop breast cancer. Olivia Munn has definitely highlighted an area of breast cancer that perhaps isn't talked about enough. Her generosity in sharing her story will undoubtedly help many more people gain knowledge about their own personal breast cancer risk. I'll see you in the next one.